Welcome back to the <laughs> ninth video in my electronic dual power throttle lever motor control IP68 thingy. In the previous video, we made our little uh, carrier PCB here uh, to hold the sensor breakout boards card here. Link in the description. Uh, we already also produced the levers and handles and now I think it's time to <clears throat> produce the side pieces out of POM. Enjoy! Looking at the general drawing, I'm talking about these two yellow marked pieces here. And they have a lot of holes, uh, first for the mechanics for uh, creating friction and setting the zero point of the lever. Then they have one big hole for the shaft where the actual lever is attached. And of course two more holes to attach both pieces to the centerpiece. Of course, I also made a detailed drawing of these two parts and please note they are absolutely symmetrical. So yeah, only one drawing needed. The major dimensions are 100 millimeters by 61 millimeters and the whole thing will be 23 millimeters thick. Uh, the most prominent feature here is of course that big radius of 50 millimeters. But we will mill that at a later stage. Uh, I explained the reason in the second video about the handles. Uh, card here, link in the description. We have two 6mm hole for two M6 screws that will go through here and clamp the whole thing to the sides of the main body. We have two, or um, yeah, depends on how you look at it, uh, one uh, through hole here, 5mm and the outer ends will be threaded with M6 and that will take on all the uh, friction and uh, spring mechanics here. And then we have this big 12 millimeter hole that's going through the whole piece for the shaft with the magnet at the end. And then we have also here this larger uh, 20 millimeter diameter pocket, just three millimeter deep. That's just here for uh, yeah, an extension of the shaft so it <laughs> won't fall through and also to uh, take on the magnet. Uh, but we will also do that on a round table on, on the milling machine at a later point, that little pocket. So what's left to do for now is to get the whole thing uh, down, so my uh, stock material, to the major dimension and uh, drill one, two, three, four, five holes. That's it. Here's my stock material. Yeah, black. <laughs> you can't see many features. Uh, anyway, of course, I uh, bought it a little bit bigger. I mean, this is, as you can see here by these lines, uh, an extruded POM plate with a thickness of, well, it should be 25 millimeters. It's actually uh, 26.5 millimeters on both sides, really, yeah, 26.5 millimeters. So we have enough material to mill down here to get it to the dimensions. Uh, overall length is uh, 105.5 millimeters. So also uh, enough space here to take material off. And the width is 65.9. So yeah, <clears throat> nothing critical here. We have uh, enough material to take off and uh, to work on. However, there is a special challenge here. So these four sides were all sawed, as you can see, uh, by different types of saws, obviously. 
uh, by the uh, shop where I bought this material and these are the extruded sides. As we saw with the, um, with the palm handles, uh, that extruded material, so in this uh, plane, is uh, yeah, not very exact. When it's extruded out of the machine, it wobbles a little bit. Uh, well, <clears throat> you first plane one uh, downside, uh, so it's uh, one side, so it's really flat. Then you plane down the other side until you are <clears throat> uh, hit your 23 millimeter dimension. So no problem at all. However, it's really hard to show you that on camera, but uh -uh. the sides are not cut here at a right angle. And that imprecision from the cutting holds true for all four sides and is consistent. So in effect, <laughs> this nice smooth reference side here, which I could use, is a little bit smaller than the other side. Or if you would extend the sides here upwards, you would get a pyramid. Okay, so this is basically a cut off pyramid. Putting such a piece into a vise, yeah, with the narrow sides doesn't really work. If you just put it in here and green are my vise jaws and you apply pressure, you probably deform these edges here because, yeah, they are the only thing that's really touching. And, uh, yeah, the thing would wobble around or it's not really precision work. Uh, if you try to fill up here these gaps with some round stock, uh, that's also not working. Because if you apply again a pressure with the jaws, these round stock pieces would be pressed out downwards and <laughs> your piece would go upwards, uh, maybe in an uncontrolled way. And of course the same holds true if you turn the whole thing upside down. So our first operations are probably trying to get these sides here to a right angle to our also because intruded imperfect reference side. And after we manage that, we can mill down the reference side here uh, so it's really nice and flat. And then we redo the right angles here. Uh, so, <clears throat> in addition, of course, unlike with aluminium, I cannot use super glue, super glue to uh, put the two pieces together and work at them at once because, uh, yeah, I cannot use heat to separate them again. So, yeah, twice the work for me, but uh, yeah, whatever. Let's get going. I have the piece now in the vise here and I, before putting it in, I cleaned up all the edges by just drawing a knife over it. Of course, I'm using here my round stock again at one side with the flexible jaw to make sure we are not uh, messing anything up by that jaw lifting or falling or something. And I'm using just the back uh, jaw, which is a nice reference to clamp to my <clears throat> relatively nice reference side. And now uh, let's mill off the top here. Just touching off here and we probably will need, you know, one or two passes, two passes for the whole thing. And we start very easy with, uh, let's say, five tenths of a millimeter. And, oh, I'm running my <laughs> spindle relatively slow. Oh, nice surface. Um, okay, let's move that a wee bit over and go all the way back. Okay, I have no idea if I'm still in few. 
Yeah, yeah, I am. Uh, yeah, there is, of course, <laughs> of the two passes here, a noticeable line, but that's actually nothing. That's nothing. Uh, very good. I clean up, and then we turn it around and do the other side. Okay, same game <coughs> for the other side. My reference surface is still here, but now my bottom should be at an exact right angle. And of course, I cleaned up the edges after that operation before putting it back into the vise with a knife. And uh, I guess I'll just give you a slow-mo from in between because, yeah, well, you saw the operation already. Now that these two sides here are at an <coughs> hopefully right angle to our <coughs> reference side, which is uh, below here and resting on the vise. And I checked that by trying to uh, slip a piece of paper here in between, which I can't. So we should be fine there. And of course, I cleaned beforehand everything, the edges with a knife. Uh, we can... <laughs> plane this side here and this will afterwards be our new reference because yeah the other side because of the extrusion might also a little bit be warped so yeah let's make a nice plane surface here this will of course take several passes here and i really have to be careful not to mill <laughs> into uh, the jaw uh, jaw of my vice here but anyway let's do it just touching off and then going over it uh, probably a very very accelerated time lapse <laughs> And again, I'm taking off about half a millimeter. I know, overexposure, but otherwise you won't see the details here on the black surface. Uh, we're running into a little problem there. Uh, remember the trimming of <clears throat> my mill setup here is not perfect. Uh, cut here, link in the description. And so uh, when I go that wide or use a tool that wide, I have really a noticeable angle here. And these marks we saw on the narrow sides, which were visible but not feelable, they are, yeah, feelable now. So I can hang my <clears throat> uh, fingernails here. Uh, it's barely measurable with uh, that thingy, uh, maybe 0 0.05 millimeters, but that's a little bit too much for my taste. So I will do two more passes here. And yeah, I guess I film it. So the lines are still visible, of course, but now uh, they barely, barely catch my fingernails and uh, that's what I want. Okay, I have to clean up that a little bit here, but yeah, I think I'm happy and we can continue with the next step, which will be quite boring because now <laughs> we will take our freshly milled surface uh, at the back here, resting against the jaw of the fixed jaw of uh, the vise as reference surface and square up our <coughs> narrow sides again. Uh, I probably won't film that, it's repetitive. Both sides are done now and the surfaces get better and better. You can still see where I do the second pass, but uh, it not even catches my fingernail anymore. So yeah, progress there. This still could be better. 
Now I have that uh, extruded, nicely extruded surface at the top. And uh, I'm using now parallels here to raise the whole thing a little bit. And since I'm trusting now my surfaces here, there is no longer any need uh, for that round stock on that side. Anyways, um, we are still at 25.8 millimeters. So I guess I will take off in <laughs> many passes. Uh, maybe I'll try one millimeter at once uh, in one pass, uh, at least two millimeters. So we are down to 23.8. And I try to make a nice finish on that surface. That is at one point I do a whole lot of passes, maybe only with a tenth or two. Uh, tenth of a millimeter and uh, we'll see how that turns out. Um, I'll give you a, <clears throat> a slow-mo in between when I take really deep cuts, okay? That one millimeter cut sure made some very nice chips. I'm happy with that surface. So after the initial one millimeter cut, uh, where I showed you the slow-mo off, I took a 0.5 millimeter cut and then an 0.2 millimeter cut and then an 0.1 millimeter cut. So a total of 1.8 millimeters. And I did these cuts just three times going back and forth. But for the last where I did six smaller passes, the uh, result was almost good, but then I did another dozen passes this direction here. And now you can still see the patterns from the tool, but uh, yeah, you cannot really, you know, feel them. So that's good. I turned the whole thing around, yeah, the parallels are still in here and now I will work my way down from that side for the remaining one millimeter. And I'll probably give you in between a time lapse of one whole run. So uh, uh, six passes in this direction and then six passes in this direction, just for the finishing cut, I guess. So that last operation, the finishing cut uh, <laughs> that you just saw in time lapse, took me about 15 minutes and I did, yeah, on the y-axis, uh, seven passes in total, not six. Anyway, we're down to exactly 23 millimeters and I <clears throat> measured that on all four corners. So it's time to turn the thing around and get down in this dimension to, uh, what was it? 61 millimeters. Okay, the piece is in, one of the narrow sides up, and I think on that side I will just make a oh, 0 0.1, 0 0.2 millimeter finishing cut. So uh, three passes along the x-axis and then six, seven passes along the z-axis. And I give you a time lapse, a time lapse of that too. That took only a little over eight minutes and yes, overexposure. So you can actually see the structure I created here. And while there are visible patterns, uh, you cannot feel them. It's absolutely smooth to the touch. And yeah, we can zoom in here a little bit. You, you see, you see where the tool was working and rotating, but yeah, as I said, smooth to the touch. Now let's turn the whole thing again around and get down to 61 millimeters in that dimension. 
Okay, peace turned around. We are currently at about 63.5 millimeters. So I will take a large two millimeter cut here in one go. Yeah, the piece is now narrow enough that <laughs> my little planer here cutter can uh, do it in one go and then I'll measure again and we'll go from here. Maybe I'll give you a <clears throat> a uh, slow motion or something like that. That two millimeter cut really produced large chips here. And yeah, that was borderline of what my little mill can do. Uh, I guess because it's exactly the same as on the other side, I finished the rest of, uh, yeah, down to 61 millimeter offline. And we're at 61 millimeters. So we're now pretty exactly 23 millimeters thick and 61 millimeters wide. And I will do now exactly the same with the second block, but I'll do that of course off camera. <laughs> I finished the second block, or was it that? <laughs> I don't know anymore, uh, offline. So we have now two blocks, uh, 61 wide and 23 millimeters thick. So all that's left to do is to mill them down to a length of 100 millimeters. And right now they are at about -ish, yeah 105.5 and yeah 105.5 so about 5.5 millimeters have to go here and i will not do that <clears throat> with that uh planer milling bit because i would have to put that in the Y's in that direction. And then I had a really, really large stick out here. And uh, yeah, that's not good. So we will put that flat into the vise and then use this end mill with a uh, very long flutes here to mill this direction. Uh, yeah, uh, that was in a mail bag uh, card here, link in the description. I will not mill the whole depth here in one go, but instead I start with about uh, half the depth and then I will do a second pass over the whole depth. If <laughs> my head is misaligned in this direction, yeah, leaning outwards here, then I will be able to create again these nice patterns we had here when we went over. And if I do enough passes, uh, that ridge here will disappear or not disappear, but I won't be able to catch my fingernail on it anymore. It will be smooth enough. However, if that <laughs> head is leaning inward here, I will just create a, yeah, uh, not quite 90 degree to that surface cut here and I will have to change the side. So let's see how that works out. So there is no discernible pattern here, uh, so line visible in the middle and I also can't feel anything. So probably <clears throat> the tram error here in, uh, the, from uh, in that axis here is uh, the other way around. So I will try the same again on the other side. I didn't film it because <clears throat> it's basically the same. I did two passes first for one half of my depth here and then uh, for the full depth. And yeah, there is <laughs> no discernible line here or ridge that I could feel with my fingernail. 
So obviously the trimming error in this axis here is negligible, at least yeah, for that yeah, relatively narrow surface. So I will just uh, do a few passes here until I get near 100 millimeters. And then we re <laughs> return to the other side because it's easier to mill there from the handling. I took off about two, two and a half millimeters on that side and it makes quite a mess. Uh, anyways, I clean up now and will continue with the uh, uh, remaining two and a half, three millimeters from the other side. Okay, uh, working on the other side now. Uh, as I said, I will take off now the remaining material here to get down to 100 and maybe I'll give you a time lapse. It's really hard to get enough light down here to make nice time lapse pictures, uh, but let's try. And we've reached 100 millimeters. Nice. By the way, the time lapse that I showed you, that was a 0.5 millimeter cut. And even at 0.5 millimeter, my flutes here flexed noticeably. So I really had to, uh, when I wanted to take an exact measurements, uh, go forth, back, and then a second time forth and back and the second time I still took off a wee bit of material. So uh, a little bit of flex in there. And that's it almost for today. I know the video <laughs> is getting long again, but then the PCB video was <clears throat> below 10 minutes, I think. Anyways, I wanted to talk about the elephant in the room that a lot of time was wasted because the uh, trimming of my mill was not perfect. That is, the head was not exactly perpendicular in both axes to the plane of my table. So when I made passes here on the long axis, that was the X axis, so from left to right, my tool looked, uh, exaggerating of course now, something like this. And I did that several passes here, and in effect I got a surface that somehow <clears throat> represented a sawtooth pattern. I'm exaggerating, of course, again now. And if these sawtooth patterns were close enough as, yeah, the first passes here, they were ba barely noticeable. But if I go to the whole width of my tool here, so 25.4 millimeters or a little less, probably 20 millimeters or so, you could feel them with your fingernail. So we're talking a uh, few hundreds of a millimeter here, but not good enough. Obviously, the trimming in the other axis was much better. It was not perfect, but much better. So if I, uh, when I took here passes, um, yeah, let's say 15, 20 millimeters wide, uh, to even out my <clears throat> sawtooth surface, it turned out really, really well, but uh, it was a whole lot of work. And also in that axis, uh, the tr uh, in that axis here, so the Y axis, the trimming was also not perfect. Okay, so when I think it was here, yeah, here, here I went almost oh, extreme, so almost my 25 millimeters. And there is actually something you can, it's barely there, but you can feel it. You can feel it. So that's not perfect, but uh, it's good enough now. But uh, yeah, <clears throat> two conclusions here from the whole affair. Uh, first one, <clears throat> if you have a mill uh, where you are unable 
uh, to <laughs> get to a perfect trim of the head, it's not the end of the world. You can make it work somehow. But second, it takes a whole lot of work, effort and time. And that's it for today, for real. I will bring the second piece to length offline uh, when I have some time to do it. And next week also, we will probably do all the required holds in these blocks. Till then, bye.